I am Dr. Naveen Bade, and uh, I'm a nephrologist here working with nephrology and hypertension consultants, along with Dr. B. Minatni and Dr. Madela, serving Aniston and Oxford for the past one and a half year. I had my internal medicine training in uh, UAB Montgomery, and then I trained in my fellowship uh, in nephrology at UAB in Birmingham. So uh, broadly categorizing kidney problems, there are problems that actually arise from the kidney itself, and then there are problems that other medications, um, sorry, medical conditions can actually cause to your kidneys. So the most common causes usually are high blood pressure and diabetes, both type one and type two. So the risks, like I said, like the more common medical conditions being high blood pressure and type two diabetes mellitus. And there are other causes that can actually put you at risk for kidney failure. Most commonly there are stones, infection, both urine infections or any other infections in your body for that, for that matter. And then other problems like prostate enlargements where you have some obstruction to your urine that can actually build up a back pressure to your kidneys and cause some kidney damage. And uh, there is something called congestive heart failure where your heart function is actually less and people tend to actually pull up fluid. That's gonna be harmful to the kidneys sometimes too. And uh, the most underlooked problem is pain medications. There is a certain class of medications called NSAIDs which include Advil, Aleve, Ibuprofen, Naproxen, Meloxicam, BC powders, all these common medications that we get uh, our hands on over the counter. So they can actually cause a lot of kidney problems too. If you're actually taking it once in a while, it should not cause really big problems. But if you're actually doing it on a daily basis, say they, they actually, so kidney is a organ where it actually has millions of blood vessels in it. So what happens is there's small arteries that actually are inside the kidneys so these uh, medications kind of have a squeezing effect on them. So that's how you actually progress to kidney uh, damage if you're taking this on a long-term basis. So if you take it once in a while, that should be all right. So there are not really any signs in the early stage of kidney disease. Most of the kidney problems actually show up uh, with some symptoms as they actually progress towards the end, uh, towards stage four, late stage kidney disease. So in stage three, which is the most common presentation when you actually have a kidney problem, we don't really see too many symptoms unless they are accompanied with some other heart problems. Say if you are entering into stage four, there are several signs that you need to watch for. Common signs usually are swelling, especially when you're actually having heart failure on top of it. And advanced kidney disease can itself cause some swelling too. And there are some other uh, problems like nausea, vomiting, decreased appetite, and then you can also see some uh, tremors, especially when you're in late stage kidney disease. And then kidneys are the ones that actually produce a hormone which tells the bone marrow to make more blood. So if it is not making enough hormone, then you might actually be anemic. That will also result the other signs of anemia, including tiredness, fatigue, and all of that. So the back pain, yeah, that is a very common question that patients ask me about. When they have a back pain in the flanks, they think that it is all the kidneys. Most of the times it is not. It might be a cramp or a muscle pull. So, but if you have any kidney stones, the kidney stones actually present as pain in your flanks, especially, and they actually radiate towards your groin area. So that is when you need to be concerned. But the kidney stone is not just associated with this. Sometimes you can have infections because stones harbor infections. They act as reservoirs for infections. So the kidney stones pain, it is not fun to start with. So if you have any pain like, like that aggravating, if it is resulting from a kidney stone, you definitely see a doctor and the doctor will actually start with the kidney ultrasound, which, will, which is pretty good in showing the kidney stones. So it depends upon what issue you're developing. Say if your urine output dropped, it's a different kind of presentation. So kidney failure actually presents, like I said, with increased fatigue, tremulousness, decreased appetite, and swelling. So if you think you're having some kidney uh, problems, the good place to start is with your family doctor. So your family doctor will go ahead and do some tests. They are actually very well trained to find out any kidney problems on the initial lab. If they require to, if they think that you need to be seen by a specialist, they are gonna refer you to us. So there are several different tests for kidney failure, especially any kidney abnormalities. So the most common test is testing the serum creatinine. So serum creatinine, so the creatinine is something that your muscles are actually secreting. It's gonna be cleared by your kidneys and the kidneys maintain the level at less, one or less than one. And this value actually differs in everyone. It depends upon your age, race, sex, and everything. 
So if the serum creatinine is elevated, that means your kidney filtration, the filtration function is actually a little low. So that is when we uh, refer you to a kidney doctor. Poor kidney function, it depends upon two things. So if you have an infection or a heart failure, exacerbation or things like that, where your kidney function drops all of a sudden, if we can correct the primary problem, the kidney function will improve. But say if you're having diabetes and high blood pressure for long times, which is not very well controlled, and you lose kidney function over the years, this kidney function loss is not reversible. So that's why you have to be careful in controlling your blood pressure and your diabetes. So there are five stages according to the books of kidney disease, but the first stage that we can see on the labs is stage three. So usually stage five is considered the late stage kidney disease where people need dialysis. So lowering, we don't have anything specific, anything and no magic drug to bring the kidney function back up again. It's mostly depending on if you have diabetes, you need to keep your diabetes under control. And the same goes with high blood pressure too. And uh, hydrate yourself very well. If you have any kidney stones or history of kidney stones in family, it's not normal to have kidney stones. So we can prevent kidney stones. So that is one thing. And try to avoid NSAIDs as much as possible. Don't take the pain medications, especially the NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, Advil, Aleve on regular basis. Only use it as needed. If you need something for pain for long term, you always have to get it from your doctor. So urine infection is just cystitis. That infection can happen only in your urine, especially it's restricted to the bladder area. The kidneys are organs, they make urine and they actually pass the urine to the bladder. It's a single structure and then you pee out. So if the infection is around in the bladder, that's called cystitis. So that is very common, which we see everywhere. Sometimes what happens is if the infection is there for a longer time, or if the infection is happening because you have an outlet obstruction, this pressure, this infection may actually spread back to the kidneys. That is what we call as pyelonephritis. That can also cause with severe presentations, including abnormal, uh, un uncontrolled pains, and low blood pressures, and high fevers, so that is what is called pyelonephritis. It can be very well treated with antibiotics itself, but it has to be very prompt. So if you see any pain or increased fevers or low blood pressures, you need to get attention. You need to go to the emergency room immediately.